action from the White House after a Justice Department memo raises questions about whether the administration has created the power to kill terror suspects, even if they are not involved in an active plot to attack the U.S. and their U.S. citizens. Welcome to America Live. I'm Shannon Bream in for Megyn Kelly. The so-called white paper sparking concerns on both sides of the aisle. A bipartisan group of senators now calling for the president to release all memos related to this new drone policy. While the American Civil Liberties Union calls the document, quote, chilling. The DOJ seems to be arguing with the, that the White House has almost the power to kill indiscriminately. Here's White House Press Secretary Jay Carney just moments ago. This president takes his responsibilities very seriously and, and, and first and foremost that's his responsibility to protect the United States and American citizens. Uh, he uh, also takes his responsibility in conducting the war against Al Qaeda as authorized by Congress uh, in a way that is fully consistent with our Constitution and uh, all the applicable laws. All right, Judge Andrew Napolitano is a former New Jersey Superior Court judge and a Fox News senior judicial analyst. He was a vocal critic of some of the Bush administration's war on terror policies. Judge, what do you say to this one? Well, this one is carrying things uh, to a, an extreme that most Americans won't recognize, Shannon, because as you stated so nicely in the introduction, a fair interpretation of this 16-page document and of Jay Carney, the president's press secretary, of Jay's interpretation of it is that the president or quote a high-ranking u.s government official close quote i'm quoting from the document can kill anyone he wants no matter what the laws say no matter what the constitution says no matter what this president himself has said that is nowhere justifiable under the constitution nowhere justifiable under federal law in fact federal law and the constitution are to the opposite unless you are actually pulling a trigger or within moments of pulling that trigger or dropping a bomb. The government has an obligation to do its best to arrest you and charge you with a crime and prosecute you before it can indiscriminately kill you. In the case at hand, the three people killed were Americans. One of them uh, was Anwar al-Awlaki, admittedly an anti-American cleric who the government says participated in plots against us. The other was his 16-year-old son and the son's friend neither of whom had anything remotely to do with the reason for which the drones were sent there. All right, there is this letter we mentioned. It is bipartisan. A number of top-ranking senators, Republicans and Democrats alike, have signed on to this uh, letter to the president, essentially saying we have grave concerns about what's being uh, outlined here. They say it's vitally important for Congress and the American public to have a full understanding of how the executive branch interprets the limits and boundaries of this particular authority. And what they're saying here is that... Uh, you know, there there's a lot of wiggle room in these definitions. And when you talk about being able to kill an American citizen, as you said, without the constitutional right to face a jury and all kinds of other due process and things, um, there's a lot of gray area there. And even if people would argue it's useful now because of someone like Anwar Alalaki, you always have to think of where it leads right. down the line. And, and you right. and I know from, from law school, one of the first things you learn is the slippery slope argument. Right. Well, I think the members of Congress have a couple of concerns on their hands, uh, on, on their minds. Uh, the first is your argument that this power used today against an unpopular target might be used in the future by another president against a person the president doesn't like, but as to whom there's no, no moral justification for pursuing whatsoever. Another concern is this 16-page white paper is written so vaguely that the, the logic from it could, could actually be extrapolated to, myth, to permit the president to kill Americans here in the United States. And the third concern the members of Congress have, I would suggest to you, Shannon, is they're upset that they didn't know about this because there's another federal statute that the president violated when he did this without telling them. You see, when the president ramps up the war on terror or decides to move into another area or use the CIA to engage people, whether to arrest them or to kill him or to kill them, he's required to tell the Senate and House Intelligence Committees ahead of time and get their consent. He apparently didn't do that. And so they're burned by this. Yeah, not the first time on an important issue that that has happened. What about the fact that we have seen uh, other memos unrelated to this out there, but the way that they classify terrorism, they also look at domestic terror issues. And there are those who, uh, there have been memos out there, you've seen them, I've seen them, that have right. suggested people who have extreme religious views, people who are pro-life, 
Some of those people could be in some ways considered domestic terrorists. They are on uh, watch lists or they should be monitored by the government. I mean, how far could this be taken? Well, you know, early in this administration, Janet Napolitano, no relation. The Secretary of Homeland Security issued a very startling memorandum, and I remember discussing it uh, with Bill O'Reilly in a whimsical way, but it's really terrifying. The, the memorandum said people who are pro-life, people who believe in the right to keep and bear arms, returning veterans, people who think the government is too big and the IRS is too powerful, could be characterized as domestic terrorists. Well, that, though, that group of people could characterize two-thirds of the country, and, and this language, this frivolous use of language by this administration and then claiming they have the right to use force to stop dead in their tracks the people who fit into these categories violates the principles of the of the Declaration of Independence and violates the supremacy of the Constitution which they've taken an oath to uphold. This is all very dangerous stuff. The government gets its powers from the consent of the governed. Do you know anybody who consented to the government doing this? Judge, I got to ask you a super quick question. I'm going to get in trouble, but I just need a yes or no answer for you. This administration has pushed the boundaries, as many do, on a number of things, using executive orders, federal regulations, going around Congress. And the public often, you know, there may be an initial outcry and then they go along with things. With this, with it going public, yes or no, do you think the administration moves forward and makes this official policy? No. I think the administration is going to run into a brick wall on this one. All right, Judge. Great to see you. Good to see you, Shannon.